All right, this is one last midnight. Welcome back to another episode of Autonaut. So I play this on the side quite a bit, actually. I've been playing this game for about 300 hours. It's a lot of fun, but I thought I'd share with you guys how to get started and how to play the game. So when you first get in, you're gonna start up a new game and you're gonna get in your little rocket shippy thingy and you get to a place where you can choose a planet. Now, I like to play colonize mode. It's kind of like their story mode. Free and creative, I think, are relatively the same, but I really can't get a, a good understanding of what is the difference between free and creative. You could set to record the game so you can see a playback over time. Random objects means that all of your resources are randomized. So if you want to keep playing this seed, you can play it over and over again by just hitting the random objects and then the resources will be randomized every single time you play it. As for best seeds, look, try to find a seed that has an enormous amount of land. Why? Because believe it or not, over time, your little, uh, I guess, city or, or area in which you build in is going to be pretty expanded out. So just keep going through this until you see a big block of land and then pick that one. When you're ready, go ahead and hit start button and you launch off to that world. When you finally land on your planet and you go through the welcome screens and it says, okay, get ready to colonize and you're ready to start. My suggestion is to immediately look around and see what's going on. You can see we have some stone deposit right over here, which is really, really nice. And then if you zoom out on the map, you can see other deposits that are laying around. Here's a much larger stone deposit. Here is another stone. We have a lot of stone around this area. Here's a clay deposit. Here's another clay deposit. Uh, what about our iron? There's a metal deposit right there. And the other one we're going to need is coal. So if you can, look around the map that you chose and see if you can find an area that has some of these resources together. Sometimes you'll get lucky and you'll have some set up like this where I have a clay deposit, an ore deposit, and a stone deposit relatively close. It's also next to fresh water, which is another huge bonus. And then I don't think that um, I'm too, too far away in this particular map from coal, but maybe I am. I think there's an area down here somewhere that the coal is at, but coal is a little bit later in the game, but that is not too far from where this area is. So this looks to be like a really good place to put a base. When you first start off, you're gonna have to do things manually. You don't have many things that you could build. You have a crude workbench that you could build. And then you also have the bot assembly unit, which you can build. Most of these are gonna to have to be done manually, right? They're gonna want two sticks and two logs. Luckily, there happens to be some resources laying around close by when you start off. So you could just grab those and put those in place. Once you have the crude workbench done, the next thing to do would be to get an ax built. An ax is gonna allow you to chop down trees, which is absolutely necessary for you to continue on in the game. Now, if you'll notice, I'm only picking up one item and dropping it off at a time. That's because your inventory, your five little hand slots, your four little hand slots, can only hold one type of item at a time. And right now, since we're really, really little, we only have one backpack slot. So we can store by using the Q key on the keyboard to store it into our backpack, which frees up our hands and use Q again to retrieve your tool. You can have multiple tools and flip between the two, but you'll have no room to hold anything in your hands. Get started whacking on some trees because trees are gonna be hugely important and actually they're gonna be the first thing that we're gonna automate. The next thing we're gonna wanna build is a shovel. So let's go ahead and store that ax and get the shovel built. And the shovel is used to dig. So we're gonna wanna go ahead and plant more trees because having more trees will allow us to make more things and all is good. Once you have your holes dug, go ahead and pick up these tree seeds and then go ahead and plant down trees. All actions in this game are done with left and right click if I didn't say so before. So once you have the three trees chopped down, some soil that was dug and some trees that were planted, you get your first little achievement, your forestry achievement. And it gives you a party hat, but most importantly, it gives you the chopping block, which is needed to progress farther into the game. You'll also get a nice little commemorative slab saying that you have done the forestry. Now that we have the chopping block, we are ready to actually really get started in the game. 
So let's go ahead and put down three different chopping blocks. While you're in this little structure blueprint mode, you have the ability to move things around. So I'm going to move this around a little bit. I'm also going to move this one down just a tad bit. And we're going to put down the third chopping block. And we're going to start building these. So they require a crude axe and a log. And once we build the chopping block, now we're able to build planks and poles. The next phase of this game is working with planks, poles, and then eventually pegs. So let's build the other chopping block really fast. And let's set that up to poles. The other thing that we can build right off the bat is storage. And storage is important because, you know, you're going to have to store some stuff. So let's put down storage for logs, planks, and poles. They happen to all be stored in this pallet. So place down three. You can see there's a lot of things that have to be made to be able to make the pallets. But let's go ahead and work on making the pallets. That's going to require a lot of logs to be converted into, into planks and then into poles in order to build the storage. But before you can do that, and you're saying, well, this is an automation game. Why don't we automate something? And you're absolutely right. Why don't we get started with some automation? Let's build our first bot. First, we need to build the bot assembly unit. And we can get that started by two logs and three planks. So let's get that built up. And once this is complete, we're now able to build the first basic bot unit. And the basic bot takes one log, three planks, one pole, and one tree seed. And now we have our first bot. Now our bot has to be powered, so you have to go behind it and you have to wind it up. And there it is. We're ready to start automating is right. So what to automate? Well, the important things to automate are things that we're going to be doing and needing right off the bat. Like, look, we're going to have to cut down a lot of trees. So maybe we should think about having some forestry bots. And we're going to need to build tools. So maybe we should think about having some toolbots. And we're also going to need planks, poles, and eventually pegs. So maybe we should have bots dedicated for those as well. And also, we're going to have to build a lot of bots. So we should have a bot building bot. A bot that builds other bots. Unfortunately, basic bots are pretty stupid. They only can carry 12 lines of code. But let's get our first bot built. Let's get a bot built that focuses mainly on picking up sticks and picking up stones. In order to do that, we're gonna have to build up this crate so we can store some stones and another crate so we can store some sticks. Now that the crates are complete, let's go ahead and make our first little bot. And then I'm gonna break these videos out into sections, things that you should be focused on first in order to advance farther into the game. So our first little bot, we want to collect sticks. Why? Because look, our tools are gonna need sticks and stones. We only have stone stuff right now, so sticks and stones are very important. Sticks are going to happen when I cut down trees, and I can also chop up logs to make more sticks. And stone, we happen to have stone up in this area, but I can collect all the stone laying around, and then I can get a miner up here, and we can collect the stone that the miner produces. But let's work on the sticks first, so that you understand how bots work. When you go to create a program for a bot, you're going to teach it by hitting the red button to record, and then you're going to do the action. So. I want to pick up this stick over here and it says find nearest stick in this area and we can expand out this area to as far as big as we want it to be actually the bot does have a restricted area in which they understand how far they can carry out commands and you can see this is the width and, and height of this, this particular bot right now as they get bigger bot brains, their area of finding stuff becomes much larger. Then I want to take my stick and I want to store it. So I'm going to go and I'm going to right click on that storage and it's going to store the stick into that storage. So the program is not complete right now because all this is saying is execute this one time. Find a stick in this area, bring it back to the storage. We want to do something like this. We want to put in a repeat and we want to control click these items and put them inside of this repeat and we want to say until our hands are full i want you to search in this area for a stick and pick it up and then i want you to move back to the storage area and put in another repeat and say until my hands are empty i want you to add that into the stick storage and then i want you to do this now we still have room 
So I want you to do this until the stick storage is full. And then I want you to repeat that forever. And that is our first little bot program. And it's gonna tell our bot, hey, go and look for sticks in this area, store it until the storage is full, and then that's it. Stop doing what you're doing. And this bot currently, I believe, can hold up to four items. I wanna say four. Nope, it can only hold three. So it holds up to three items and it'll come back and it'll drop these guys off. And then it'll continue to keep doing this over and over again. In the next video, I'll cover one of our first production lines, which is going to be stone production. And then we'll work on maybe forestry production, tool production, and uh, planks, poles, all of that basic bot building until we get up to a production line of building bots by themselves, having bots build themselves, which makes life a whole heck of a lot easier. So until then, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Would love to have you in the community. If you want to follow me on any of my social media, you can find the links in the description below. And make sure to hit that notification bell. That way you know when I go live and when I post new videos. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.